Hey Spencer Christian Church, excited you're here and we want to give you some tools to help you share your faith. And so what I want to present to you today is something that I call the response to the gospel cycle. Uh, and uh, so real briefly, I'm going, to, I'm going to run through that cycle real quickly. And then after that, we're going to kind of go down and break it apart. So the first part is here. You have to hear the gospel. Uh, you have to believe. You have to have faith in what you've heard. And then you, the Bible says that we need to confess Christ as Lord. So that's part of our response to the gospel. Then the Bible also says that we need to repent. And then we need to be immersed into Christ. And then we need to live and love like Jesus from there. And, and part of that includes sharing the gospel. So let's start that cycle all over again. And we're going to start with um, what is the gospel in a real easy brief way to share the gospel. Because I think a lot of times people get hung up and they think, man, I, I can't share my faith. I don't know enough. But let me tell you, it's really pretty simple. The, the basic elements that someone needs to know in order to have that, that saving faith that we are called to as part of our response. So here's the way that I explain it. it it's very simple. If you can remember good news, bad news, good news, then you can remember and you know enough to share the gospel. So here's what I mean by good news, bad news, good news. Good news. Genesis 1, 31 says, God saw all that he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So that's the good news. We are divinely created in the image of the almighty God, the creator of the universe, the one who spoke and the limitless galaxies came into existence, which includes you and me. Uh, so that's the first good news. Now, the bad news is uh, briefly stated in Romans 3.23, where it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So when Adam and Eve uh, ratified sin in their life and they rebelled against God by uh, doing the one thing that he told them not to do, sin entered the world. And we have all ratified that ourselves in our own lives, as Romans 3.23 states there. So that's the bad news. Sin entered the world, and we have that in our lives as well. Good news. The good news is... Uh, can, can briefly be remembered with a verse that you know very well, John 3, 16. But I'm going to add on 17 because that's an important part. And a lot of times people don't even know verse 17 that follows after John 3, 16. John 3, 16 and 17 reads like this. And here's the good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but, he, but that the world might be saved through him. So there's the good news, that the world might be saved for those who believe in Christ might be saved. So that's good news. That's as the Greek word uh, states, the euangelion, the gospel, the good news. Pretty simple, right? You can remember that. Good news, bad news, good news. All right. So now that you're equipped to just share the gospel, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, how to help people walk through the response to the gospel. So we're going to talk about this in uh, view of how we define what a disciple is, too. A disciple is one whose head is being changed, whose heart is being changed, and whose hands are being changed by the gospel. And, and so we're going to view that definition of a disciple in the way that we talk about this response cycle that we've already gone through. So let's take a look at that. First of all, hear the gospel. You've got to hear it. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Mark 8, 17 through 18 says, and Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet see or understand? Do you have a hardened heart having eyes? Do you not see and having ears? Do you not hear? And do you not remember? Okay, so what he's saying is you're not getting it. It's not getting into your head. Okay, uh, so we have to cognitively understand this good news, bad news, good news cycle of who Christ is and what his story is. So 
okay, I've heard, right? Uh, so, so is that it? Uh, well, there, there, there is more than that. Um, so the next step is uh, past hearing is believing or faith. Uh, again, let's look back at our verse, John three sixteen. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he loves the world, but whoever believes in him shall not perish. So belief, that faith factor, it is very vital and important in our response to the gospel. Uh, again, John 5, 24, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who, had, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. So, great, belief. Is, is that enough? I, I've got a belief. Is that it? Well, James 2, 19 says this, You believe that God is one? Well, you do well. The demons also believe that and they shudder. So is belief in itself enough? Are, are the demons on team Jesus? Clearly no, right? So belief in and of itself is not uh, all we need in our response to the gospel. So, so what's next? Well, Romans 10, 9 through 10 gives us an idea of that. It reads like this, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So there you see that, that next element. It's not just enough to have that cognitive understanding. You have to believe in your heart. It has to become a part of who you are. So. So what's next? Repentance of sin. Acts 2.38. Uh, in, in Acts chapter 2 is called the day of Pentecost. It's when many people point to the day of the birth of the church. And what Peter does in that is gives the first gospel message. And the people, it says they're, they're pierced to the heart when Peter gives this first gospel message. Uh, essentially given that same good news, bad news, good news cycle that we've already talked about. And it says the people are pierced to the heart, okay? They, they're having that saving understanding that goes down to the depths and the core of who they are. And this is what they say. They say, what do we do to be saved? And Peter says this in Acts 2, 38. Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, again, in 2 Corinthians 7.10, it says, For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. So repentance brings about salvation. So that's part of this response to the gospel. Be baptized is the next part of the response. And now we're getting into the hand part of what we need to do as we respond to the gospel. We've moved from the head to the heart and now to the hands. Uh, again, that passage in Acts 2.38 that we just talked about, it says, Repent, each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So there's that next step. Uh, it is uh, repent and baptism. You see how those are kind of coupled together? You, you see, baptism is uh, it's so much more than just an individual act. It, it, it's so much deeper. It's so much richer than that. Because what we do when we are baptized, we are identifying with Christ. Um, and, and when we identify with Christ, we are entering into this community of Christ followers. And one of the byproducts of being in that community is we are a saved community. So you are inviting people into this saved community when you share the good news with them and you invite them to hear and to uh, receive and believe uh, the gospel and, and into their heart, not just into their head. And, and then it follows through with this idea of repentance in the heart, right? You're not going to do the things that you used to do anymore. You're going to do the things that look more like Jesus. And, and then we are immersed into Christ. So uh, Romans 6, 3 through 6 is one of my favorite passages when it deals with uh, baptism. Uh, it says, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him 
through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be uh, in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. You see the beauty of that passage and, and the significance of what baptism is in the life of a believer. It, it's part of our response to the gospel because it's in that that we become identified with the death, burial, and resurrection with Christ. And in that resurrection, we now have power and victory over sin and death in our life. We no longer have to say, yes, sin, I invite you into my life. We, just like Jesus, had the power to overcome sin in his life. When temptation came to him, he was flawless in overcoming any temptation that he came. And now that the Holy Spirit that empowered Christ to live this perfect life, and empowered him to be raised from the dead, that same Holy Spirit power indwells the, the lives of a believer. So we no longer have to fall victim to sin in our lives. We too can overcome. Man, that's encouraging. That's profound. And we get to invite people into this. We get to share this good news. So uh, response to the gospel, repent and be baptized. Okay, I've repented and I've been baptized. Is that it? Well, what we need to understand is really that's one of our first steps in coming to faith, These, uh, the ones that we've already talked to. The ongoing part of, of uh, our response to the gospel is what I like to briefly call live and love like Jesus. We are becoming more and more transformed into the image of Jesus. James 2, 17 says, Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. Philippians 2, 12 says, So then, my beloved, just as you have, have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. John uh, 15, 5 through 8 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and they cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so provide, prove to be my disciples. How do we prove to be followers of Christ? Because of our deeds, our actions, our ethic, how we live our lives, the fruit as John talks about, as Jesus talks about here in John 15. We get to spend our lives reflecting the life of Christ to a world that's dark and lost and lonely and desperately need of the gospel. So we live and love like Jesus. And, and, and a key and essential way to live and love like Jesus takes us back to sharing the gospel, this gospel cycle, response to the gospel cycle that I talked about. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is one of my favorite books in the whole Bible. It reads like this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing, no, no merit, no works, anything that we do. Now, we just talked about that we live and love like Jesus, and by our deeds, that's how we know if we are followers of Christ. But those deeds, those actions aren't to merit favor uh, with God or to gain or earn our salvation. No, that, that activity, our actions, our deeds, they all flow from a grateful heart for what Christ has done in us, through us. So it's an entirely different focused and shift because it is a free gift of God. Now verse 9 reads like this of Ephesians 2, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. Verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in him. So you, you see, 
That's just a natural flow. He's prepared things for us to do that bring glory and honor to him. And we get to be a part of this activity through the power and grace of Christ. He's chosen us. We are the megaphone of the gospel. We get to do that. What an awesome responsibility and privilege that we have to share the hope of Jesus with this world. So here we go again. Here's this response to the gospel cycle now that we've worked through it and we'll show it uh, all together again. And now you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, Because the end of this, we're going to repeat this cycle again. Because here's what Romans 10, 14 says. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? We've got to be that preacher to continue this cycle of hear, believe, confess, repent, and be immersed into Christ, to live and love like Jesus, which again is includes sharing the gospel. And then guess what happens? That flips over to someone else. And, and they hear it when we share it with them. They believe, they confess, they repent, they're immersed into Christ. And then they live and love like Jesus too. And part of their response to living and loving like Jesus is to share it with someone else. And the cycle goes on. And the cycle goes on. Because a disciple is one who's making other disciples. So I challenge you in that. Be a disciple. Go and make other disciples. Revel in this responsibility and the privilege that we have to share the hope that lies within us. Go out and be the church.